If you're sitting on a lump sum of cash that you plan to invest, you could invest the lump sum in a risk-appropriate portfolio immediately. You could dollar cost average over a period of time, meaning systematically investing equal parts into a risk-appropriate portfolio over a set period, or you could sit on your cash until what feels like a good time to invest. This is a decision that I know torments people when they have cash available. Cash feels safe and the stock market feels scary. There's always a reason, whether it's market valuations, world events, or economic news that makes the current moment in time feel like the scariest time ever to invest. I'm Ben Felix, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital, and I'm going to tell you how to decide between dollar cost averaging and lump sum investing. I want to be clear before starting that I'm assuming that you have a lump sum to invest. If you're saving regular amounts from your paycheck, there is no decision to make. You're dollar cost averaging by necessity. If you have a lump sum available, you need to decide how to enter the market. Dollar cost averaging feels smart. The reason often given for its apparent effectiveness is that when stock prices are high, you're buying fewer shares, and when prices are low, you're buying more shares. While mathematically correct, dollar cost averaging has been proven objectively suboptimal many times. The strongest argument in favor of dollar cost averaging is behavioral. Behavioral economist Mayor Statman offers a framework in a 1995 paper to explain why dollar cost averaging remains popular despite being suboptimal. In short, dollar cost averaging can help with minimizing regret, avoiding investing a lump sum right before a crash by instead making lots of smaller investments. Despite the behavioral appeal, I think it's useful to understand how suboptimal dollar cost averaging is relative to lump sum investing. This doesn't mean that data are more important than investor behavior, but I think it is important to make decisions from a perspective of understanding rather than a perspective of fear. In a 2020 analysis, we compared lump sum investing to dollar cost averaging in six stock markets. While the cash was being deployed in our model, it earned the rate of return of one month US Treasury bills. Across the full sample, investing a lump sum beat dollar cost averaging about 65% of the time. The approximate annualized cost of dollar cost averaging was about 0.38% over 10 years, much more than the fee on most index funds. Whether regret minimization is worth that estimated cost will be a personal decision. To try to address common concerns that come up when people have a lump sum to invest, we also looked at the performance of dollar cost averaging in a few specific cases. In the worst 10% of outcomes for lump sum investments, dollar cost averaging does have a small advantage on average, but it still trails lump sums more than 50% of the time. This is surprising given that we were looking at the worst periods for lump sums with perfect hindsight. Even if you knew for certain that it was a bad time to invest, which of course nobody can predict, dollar cost averaging is not a silver bullet to improve the outcome. If the decision to invest is being made immediately after a 20% or greater drop in the market, a time when behavioral biases are likely heightened, lump sums continue to be advantageous on average. Finally, we compared investing a lump sum to dollar cost averaging when U.S. stock valuations were in the 95th percentile of expensiveness and found again that lump sum continues to dominate. These findings are far from revolutionary. A long list of academic papers going back to the 1970s have suggested that dollar cost averaging is suboptimal in a rational decision-making framework. Even if dollar cost averaging is deemed useful from a behavioral perspective, I have to question whether the portfolio being deployed in that case is just too risky for the investor. A 2016 paper in the Journal of Wealth Management demonstrates theoretically, numerically, and empirically that dollar cost averaging is approximately equivalent to an asset allocation where only 50 to 65% of the portfolio is invested in risky assets and the rest is invested in riskless assets. But the dollar cost averaging is suboptimal compared with a portfolio with a constant 50 to 65% risky allocation. The authors conclude that dollar cost averaging should be recommended with care since risk averse investors could be better off investing a lump sum in a more conservative asset allocation instead of dollar cost averaging into a more aggressive one. Rather than investing a lump sum or dollar cost averaging, many investors opt to wait for a drop in the level of market prices before investing. They opt to buy the dip. In a separate analysis, we looked at waiting for a 10 or 20% market decline to invest a lump sum and found that buying the dip underperforms on average and in most 10-year periods in our sample. Waiting for a 20% drop gives up more return and underperforms more frequently than waiting for a 10% drop. This even holds true when the analysis is constrained to starting months that are all-time highs in the market. If you have a lump sum to invest, it is likely optimal to invest it in a risk-appropriate portfolio as soon as possible. There is a strong behavioral argument for dollar cost averaging, though if you're so worried about regretting the decision to invest a lump sum that you deem dollar cost averaging necessary, 
it might be a sign to reconsider your asset allocation. Thanks for watching. I'm Ben Felix, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with someone who is struggling to decide how to invest a lump sum of cash.